we going in. Oh, we're going to have some fun today, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Weekend Briefing Live. I, I wanted to do this last year, but had to learn some more things. But here we are, 2022. We're doing the Weekend Briefing Live. And this episode, ooh, guys, we, we got some stuff to talk about. The topic of discussion is why the banks are moving into crypto. Okay? That's what we're going to be discussing. And the information that I have gathered, guys, just want to tell you, this stuff is steep. So we're going to take our time today. You know, we're not going to rush through this. We're going to, of course, let people join us. And we're going to take a look at the charts because we've had some recent market activity that was quite significant. Now, I'm over here. I'm pulling up the, oh, welcome, brother. Pulling up my second screen here. That's got my the YouTube live chat on it because sometimes in StreamYard, I don't catch all the comments. So, okay, but we did catch this one. <laughs> all right, welcome, brother, welcome. But let's jump over to the charts real quick and see what's going on right now with Bitcoin, guys. Now, something interesting that I do see right now, okay? So as it stands, we are sitting at 42,000. 116. This is courtesy of Masari. This is why I like Masari because you see this price is moving up to the minute. But one thing I want to show you guys is what's today? The seventh. Okay. So we go back to last year, January 9th of 2020. We're sitting at the same range 40K, 40.2, right? But then look at what began to happen January 10th. January 11th and January 12th. We really bottomed January 21st, 30,800. Okay. Guys, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that day all too well. Um, everybody thought it was over. They were like, bear market, bear market all through 2021. We might not see any highs until the summertime, all this other stuff, right? But look at what happened, guys. We went another couple days. What was that? The bottom 21st. That week, 25th, this is Bitcoin. Now, a lot of projects on the 25th that uh, last year started to shoot up. Okay. But Bitcoin needed a couple more days because it wanted to shine on its own. <laughs> right. So we go over to January 27th. Really, really bottomed out. 30,420. The next day, everyone woke up. We were up $3,000, okay? Then we go over January 31st, had a slight come down, you know, people were unsteady. But when February came, guys, we went absolutely insane and continued to go insane for the next three months. So again, why I really feel like that's what we're about to see again. Pattern of behavior is just too much the same. And then... When we look at the chart here, okay, I'm on the weekly right now, guys. So what we're seeing here, this is our weekly candle. This is where we're sitting right now. We got about two days, seven hours left. Now, what can I can totally expect to happen because I've, I've been looking at these charts going on two years now, and you do notice some patterns, okay? So what I can expect happening is... We're going to finish this candle out and it's going to bring us a little bit closer to this lower band, right? Then into the next week, okay, the pattern of behavior that I've seen in correlations with these candlesticks and these bands is that sometimes when we have a downwards momentum, a move down like this, we like to hug that Bollinger band an extra candle, If, if you know what I mean? Like... So basically what I'm saying is next week, all right, we're going to we're kind of going to play it out the rest of this weekend. Of course, you know, when stocks close uh, on the weekend, crypto market tends to get a lot more liquidity. So that might sustain us above 40K. But once Sunday evening kicks in, we go into Monday and the rest and traditional markets open back up, we might pull back down again. And that's in order to ride that lower band. OK, because the more we ride, sit on that band, it's kind of serves as a springboard. OK, we're we're sitting there and we're building momentum. All right. Now, if we are to repeat what we saw last year, 
then of course this needs to happen. We'll come back down almost probably to the same price, decent 30K, maybe not. Now, here's another thing I want to talk about too. If we do come all the way back down to the 30s, then yeah, it's a for sure shot. 30K to 100K in four months, totally possible. We went from, let's go back here. Where were we? End of 2020, going into 2021, guys, we were still $10,000 Bitcoin. I remember getting into this market and Bitcoin was at $3,000. Okay, when they did that, but at that time, I had no clue on how to navigate this space. But I remember seeing Bitcoin at $3,000. So this is how I know I can tell you that a move from $3,000 to $20,000 in the span of six months, totally possible. A move from $20,000 to $60,000 in the span of four months, also possible. So why would it not be just as possible to go from $30,000 to $100,000 or thirty? dollars up to let's just minimum 75k. We'll, we'll, we'll suffice at 75k because that run up is going to do wonders for the market. Okay. Now, the opposite scenario would be that we don't go all the way back down to 30,000. And if that's the case, then that's even better. Okay. Because 30,000, when we did it last year, that from a technical perspective, that was the support level. OK, then with this analogy, you kind of have to be able to look at a yearly time chart, the, the, the real large time frames like the monthly, for example, might give us a better depiction of that. But essentially, if we come down I'm gonna go back over to Masari here, we come down. Let's see. We bottomed out last year. Thirty thousand. However, if we only come down to where this bottom band is, thirty nine. And then sentiment pushes us down, fear sentiment pushes us down a little bit more, and we bottom out at 35. 35 to 70,000, that's a 50% run up. That's totally possible. Okay. I watched that happen. And some of you who have been here, you know, been in the space for a couple of years. I'm pretty sure you've seen that too. Now, I'm going to open up this secondary screen here to make sure I keep up with the chats. But yeah, guys, simply put, that's how I'm seeing it happen. Markets are making their move. They're doing what they're going to do, you know. But again, we're here for the long haul. You know, that's what we're here for. Okay. YouTube. Yeah, again, guys, I'm just having that up just so I don't miss any comments. But yeah, the markets are looking um, appetizing, honestly. You know, <laughs> some very decent prices, guys. Let me show you this. Because uh, courtesy of Masari, got the Elite 8 here, you know, so that way we can keep track of those top coins. Now, you'll see Polkadot is on this list at number two. That is only because they don't have a coins information listed on Masari just yet. So, hey, we're good Polkadot right there. Looks fitting to me, right? <laughs> but this is the Elite 8, guys, and you can see we are at a heavy discount. Binance, I was secretly waiting for Binance to come back down under 500 bucks. I really was because yeah, that's going to be massive. Polkadot coming in at 25 bucks. Crypto.com fell back under 50 cents. Not worried about that. Stellar and Hedera both sitting at 26 and 28 respectively. And then Chili's right behind that 27 cents. Digibyte, guys, the two. <laughs> two cents. This is Okay, if I would have saw this um, last year before I knew what I knew, I probably would have looked the other way. Seeing this now, after knowing what I know now, sweet, merciful heaven, guys. <laughs> sweet, merciful heaven. Oh, okay. I see. Whoa. Okay, guys, we have. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wow, that guys, this this officially goes down as the greatest Friday I've ever had. So you guys see this comment. First and foremost, I want to say thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And 
mainly for the reason that I can now tell my son that the system that he's going to use, okay, in his everyday life was created by somebody that looks like us, okay? So again, I want to thank you for that. And <laughs> man, I'm really excited. I got to read this whole comment. Um, really likes the bio. That a couple of dudes thought he would jump in and give my support. Yeah, God, wow, I did not expect this. This is what happens with live television. Again, highly grateful. Uh, hope you stick around for the rest of the stream to see what we're going to be talking about. We got some, we got a really, really big topic to go over today. And we may lean into that territory, to that, you know, decentralized finance territory. Got some pretty good information, but let's, let's pull it back together <laughs> really quick, guys. Go back over to these charts here. And then we're going to get into the topic of discussion. So yeah, did you buy two cents? Right, year ago. If I didn't know, I would have looked the other way. Knowing what I know now, and especially, guys, the notes that I have, it all leads up to one thing. Okay, we're gonna get to it. But seeing that, team did you buy the two cent steel? Okay, steel. And then of course we have Energy Web token sitting under ten cent again. Very decent opportunity. We already know about the climate initiative, so forth and so on, guys. Um, let's see the rest of the markets. Yeah, pretty much same story. Ethereum is getting really close to that 2000 again. A two thousand dollar Ethereum, 2900. Man, kind of nerve wracking a little bit, a little bit. But even still, every time these prices go down, good opportunity to readjust your positions, reevaluate them, stuff like that, you know. But yeah, the rest of the market is looking that way, guys. So Let's get into the order, the itinerary, the recipe. <laughs> Looking for the right word here. So, guys, we I went to the community beginning of the week and I was like, OK, I know I want to start doing these lives more consistently. And one big thing about YouTube is community engagement. And I love talking to you guys because you give me feedbacks like this. So I asked, what will be the topic of this week's live stream? Gave you guys a few options. You know, I was expecting a shield session. A lot of people like to talk about new coins. Um, of course, we had best DeFi platforms to use in 2022. So, yep, yeah, Reggie, that was on our mind. Um, but the outstanding majority out of 192 votes, guys, was the big banks. And with this, there was a post from a member of our community, FOMO Sapien. Uh, if you're tuning in, Thank you. All right. Now, this leads us, this is going to sit very well in what we're going to discuss today. But before we get into this side of it, I want to give you guys the upside, the positive, you know, the, the glamorous side of it. Okay. It's going to be important. I have a clip that I was fishing around with. Let's see if we can find it here. These new survey showing that uh, new members of the million. Okay, so this clip is essentially going to be about a statistic that's going around um, for us millennials, essentially how we're making it now, okay? Which is very interesting, but I just felt it served as a good buffer because we are going to get deep, okay? So let's check this out. Let me adjust this value here. Okay. In Air Club have a hefty portion of their wealth in crypto. And Robert Frank joins us with the details. Hey, Robert. Hey, Tyler. More than 80% of millennial millionaires, they own crypto. But what's more surprising is just how much they own. According to the CNBC Millionaire Survey, more than half of millennial millionaires have at least 50% of their wealth in crypto. Nearly a third of them have 75% or more of their wealth in crypto. Compare that with baby boomers, only 4% of boomers have any crypto. Now, the numbers suggest that crypto is not only an investment, but also the main source of wealth for many millennial millionaires. And they plan to buy even more. About half of them planning to add to their crypto investments over the next 12 months, only 6% planning to reduce their crypto holdings. Now, millennial millionaires are bullish on other investments as well. Most plan to add to their equities next year. They have the highest forecasts of any generation on the economy, interest rates, and inflation. So, Tyler, they like everything right now, and they want more of it. 
<laughs> man, the way media puts things together. But I would definitely agree with that, though. I'm definitely planning on increasing my position. OK. And uh, yeah, I'm a millennial, too. <laughs> Not that that has anything to do with it. But I provided this clip first because where we're about to take this next kind of takes us into a morality discussion. OK, after all of the information that I had gathered uh, in the last couple of days and throughout the weeks and uh, shout out to well, a member of our network, Jesse, Jesse C. OK, he has been sending me things <laughs> and stuff. And I just want to say I appreciate the work, guys. I appreciate the work you're putting in, brother. Really do. But let's go over to this FOMO sapien quote. And that name is so cool. Um, but he says he gives us a reasoning that is very strong. OK, and this is where we're going to jump from. But he says reasons why big banks are moving into crypto on the long term goal of the Rockefellers and of the NWO Wolf Pack. That's how we're going to refer to them. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we used to talk about was the ultimate plan of the banking industry, what they wanted to accomplish, the goals not just the Federal Reserve, but the private banks in Germany, England, all over Italy, and all over the world. They all work together. The ultimate goal is that these people have in mind is to create a one world government, of course, run by the banking industry, run by the bankers. They're doing it in sections. Euro, The European currency, what the euro and the European constitution, there's one part of it. And now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, and they want to create a new currency called the Amero. The whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an RFID chip implanted. All the money will be in our chips. And so instead of having them uh, instead of having cash, anytime you have money in your chip, they can take it out. So forth and so on. They just deduct it out of your chip digitally and if you're like me and you're protesting what they're doing they can just turn off your chip and you'll have nothing now this quote actually is very very tied the, the his his position he's not alone I'll, I'll just say it like that guys he is definitely not alone and it's and it's so funny how that prior to this I released a video earlier in the year. Okay. I don't know if you guys remember this, but Catherine Austin Fitz, she made a very, very, um, well, she conducted an interview and really put down on paper some very important things. Okay. And it really lines up a lot with this comment. Okay. So I also want to share that with you guys as well. And I have that right here. Oh, yeah. You guys remember that? Throwback, right? By the way, if you stuck with me through this phase of the channel, you're the real deal. You're the real goat. Okay? But so, before wait, just... um, we get this started, I'm just going to get it to the right part, give you the context here. But if you haven't seen this video already, and I, of course, I do urge you to go check it out on the channel, what she's essentially about to break down to us is the infrastructure the core workings of what we just witnessed over the last year and a half two years okay this interview was conducted in early 2020 and i think i brought it to the channel sometime in april of this year okay it's part of a larger documentary you can find it on library um it's called planet lockdown you can find it on library and there's plenty other sources but not anything mainstream <laughs> So that's another reason why we're going to do this in sections as well as the other content, too. But just going to let this play for a second. And you guys just let me know what you think. Dollar has been the reserve currency. And uh, the system is what I would describe as long in the tooth. And the central bankers are trying to bring in a new system, but it's not ready to go yet. And what we're we're in a period of great change and uncertainty where the central bankers are trying to keep the dollar system going and accelerate. So they're trying to lengthen the dollar system and then they're trying to accelerate bringing in the new system. 
and they have to bring in the new system without anybody quite realizing exactly what it is. Global reserve currency system, the dollar, and it needs to evolve and change, and it's long in the tooth. There's lots of unhappiness with the system, and the central bankers are trying to bring a new system, and to do it, they're trying to extend the old and accelerate the new, and it makes it a very chaotic thing. Okay, so just real quick, she she mentioned these banks. All right, I want to show you guys this. Let me see here. Yes, I'm gonna go back over here, pull this up, and then enlarge it. I was able to find this piece of information. It's very crazy how when you Google these questions, the information that they provide, it's mind blowing. But I was able to find this list of banks. Apparently, as of this information was from uh, September of last year. It's the most recent information I could find. Not, you know, not surprised at all that this information is keep is tightly sealed. But these are the 13 banks as of right now that are the most heavily involved in crypto okay, or blockchain technology. And right away, we can see some of our favorite characters, uh, Citibank. UBS, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, mm, 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 Goldman, Barclays. Now, specifically JP Morgan, they were the ones that were like, this is stupid. Don't do it. <laughs> you know, they were firing people a few years ago for even talking about Bitcoin on their floors. You know, now they have their own coin. Okay. Which I'm in the process of digging more into about that because there's some uh, some ties to a specific project that, you know, it's it's not, there's not a solid connection as of yet, but it's so close, it's kind of scary. But JP Morgan, Barclays, MUFG, ING, Nomura. Now, with this Nomura bank, Quant Stamp, I just found that that, that stood out to me when I saw Quant Stamp. Now, you guys will be able to let me know about this, but Quant Stamp and the Crypto Quant, the Quant Network, are they connected? I still have to look deep into the Quant Network, but I just wanted to ask you guys because you guys mentioned Quant a lot. So when we go over to these types of things, but yeah, these are the 13 banks that are running the show right now, okay? that are heavily invested. And then again, like I said, years ago, all of these guys were just trying to demean Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and digital assets, even Kevin O'Leary. Now he's all talking about NFTs is going to be better than Bitcoin. I had a comment about that. I'm going to keep it to myself. But let's go back to this Catherine clip. And trust me, guys, if you're just coming in, welcome. We're, we're knee deep in this bank discussion. And it's going I, I got more for you, trust me. So let's pull Since this back. Much in. of the new is being tested and tried and prototyped, and it involves many different industries. So uh, I describe the new system as the end of currencies. So it's we're not bringing in a new currency. We're essentially bringing in a new transaction system that will be all digital and essentially in currencies as we know them. So what they're trying to do is involves essentially all the money on the planet. So it's big, it's complicated, it's messy. Um, and the challenge they have is how do you market a system that if people understood it, nobody would want. What is the actual effect of the lockdown measures? So what you're doing is you're trying to, I used to call the Patriot Act, the Concentration and Control of Cash Flow Act. And this is a very similar process. You're trying to dramatically centralize economic and political control. So let me give you an example. We have 100 small businesses on Main Street in a community. You declare them non-essential, shut them down. Suddenly Amazon and Walmart and the big box stores can come in and take away all the market share. In the meantime, the people on Main Street have to keep paying off their credit cards or their mortgage. So they're in a debt entrapment. Um, and they're desperate to get cash flow to cover basically their debts and their day-to-day -day expenses. In the meantime, you have the Federal Reserve institute a form of quantitative easing where they're buying corporate bonds and the, and the guys who are taking up the market share can basically finance 
at you know zero to one percent, or the their banks can at zero to one percent, when everybody in Main Street is paying sixteen to seventy percent of their credit cards without income. Okay, now on that note, I'm going to show you what I have for this one. This actually came. I'm going to have to yeah share my web page here. Pull this up. Now this one, this piece of information actually came a little bit, uh, couple, actually a couple days more recently. But let's see here. Yes, this is a lovely website I discovered called uh, Wall Street on Parade, and uh, they have some very interesting articles, guys. Very interesting articles. But essentially, something occurred in 2019 around the same time as the origins of the current version of the normal <laughs> that we have now. But she was just talking about how these banks and financial institutions received a large amount of money. Okay. Now, this article, courtesy of Wall Street on Parade, again, great read. I would definitely uh, suggest checking them out. But says that the Fed released the names of banks that had received $4.5 trillion in cumulative loans in the last quarter of 2019. Under its emergency repo operations for a liquidity crisis that has yet to be credibly explained amongst the largest borrowers were J.P. Morgan, Chase, Goldman, and Citigroup, three of the Wall Street banks that were at the center of the subprime and derivatives crisis in 2008. Nobody talked about this, okay? And this happened September 17th, 2019. It was my father's birthday. That's kind of cool. But yeah, nobody talked about this, right? And then, again, if we go back to our list here, let's see, go back to our list and enlarge that, who do we see? Morgan, JP, Goldman. Really shocked that Chase isn't involved, but then there's Citibank, which I think they somehow acquired them a few years ago. I'm not really sure. But even still, those same players, those same figures are in place today. And then Here's something else that I found out. We're going to pull this tab back up here. Let's see. Central Bank of Iran. No, that wasn't it. Yes, here it is. February 14th, 2019. First major U.S. bank launches its cryptocurrency. Mm, guess which bank this was? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. J.P. Morgan, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Look at the timing of this, 2019. This story was, this came out in Q1 of 2019. And then by the end of the year, they needed some money. Or did they? You know, so much speculation, so much speculation. However, the reason why I proposed this question initially, because I feel like knowing will give us a better we'll have a better understanding of our investment path, okay? Because it, we really need to know all the parameters of what we're dealing with here, okay? From all the uh, all the angles. And like I've been mentioning, I have been obsessed with the origins of all of this. And every time I go back down that route, I always run into banks. They're always there. They serve as gatekeepers. They've always been. And now they are looking to position themselves in that similar role in this next revolution, okay? Because, see, it's really a thing of, and uh, let, me, let me pull this out real quick and give this to you guys, but it's really a thing of, let's see here. Okay, so we have, and this is something I'm going to pull from outside of our industry really quick, but I don't know if you guys noticed over throughout 2021, we'll just use Netflix for an example. The majority of their films, they carried the same premise. OK, whether it was a sci fi, a drama or an action flick or a love story, you know, superhero films. There was an under there were a couple underlying premises throughout all of those. One, the metaverse or the multiverse. Right. And secondly, it was the transition from the old guard to the new guard. There was a lot of that going on. Okay. 
when I did the video on banks behaving badly in that I stumbled upon information that came all the way up from the top that illustrated the fact that there was a lot of there's a lot of friction at the top of the pyramid right now it has been for the last few years because the previous age and the new one they don't exactly agree on certain things okay again that's what makes this time in human history so very unique because we are on the precipice of change true change for the first time in a long time okay which is again going to all tie into the question that I'm going to present at the end. Okay. It all ties into the morality of it all. Now, so we're talking about um, going to JP Morgan. Let's, we're going to go back to the clip. I'm going to go back to the clip because this part, she is about to, when she said this section, guys, this piece here is so what, many people are familiar no this is what really gave me my uh investing focus when it comes to industries and different sectors okay that's really when i started to come at you guys with the global crypto adoption all weather portfolio massive diversification because how she's about to lay this out you're gonna see why it's required this is a large collaborative effort that spans across industries, guys. A lot of industries. Okay. Let's let me pull this up here. Yep. Man, when she pulls out this pen, you've got 24 7 surveillance. And if people don't do what you say and behave the way you want, uh, you know, they can and, and, and will shut off your money. So, and, and they'll also have spatial control. If they say you can't travel more than five miles, that's it, you, you know, because you're in a you're in a complete digital control system. We're digitizing everything, but it includes the human body as well and the human mind. So this system comes with complete control, not only of your ability to transact financially, which is hooked up to your body, but uh, very sophisticated mind control technology through the media and those cloud connections. So so basically you're talking about hooking up into the Borg if you will. And, um, and so transhumanism and technocracy go hand in hand now. So if you look at what's going on, we have the tech people building the, the clouds and the telecommunication. Okay. This is, this is the part I really wanted you to see. We came in a little bit early, but hey, it's live TV. Gotta love it. We have the military doing space and operating military doing space and operations constellation dag operation warp speed so they're putting up the satellites okay then we have big pharma which is making the injections that are full of these mystery ingredients and the change modify your dna and for all we know make you infertile now she just mentioned pharmaceuticals that industry the medical industry um on the, the level of vibration that this conversation is going to be on, this question isn't the main event question, but it it's here's something I want to put on you. We have projects like Civic and others that are focusing their efforts on these digital V passes. Okay, don't don't want to use the whole word, but they're focusing on these passes, and um, you know. I've had a couple conversations with people and they immediately hit me with the moral implications of that kind of investment. You're directly investing in the problem, according to some people. According to others, though, it's a money-making opportunity. Again, that's where the morality comes in. <laughs> this is, we're we're going we're gonna to clear some air on some stuff today, guys. Yeah, we, we really are. Um, and then we have the media pouring out the propaganda. And then we have the central bankers engineering the to, to the crypto, the central bank crypto systems. So you have these different pillars, and it's very important when you look at what's going on day to day, particularly in the media, they're trying to keep them separate so that you can't see how they're going to come together in a, in a created system 
which is basically integrated into your body and your mind. In an integrated system, that's that's interoperability, isn't it? Mm, been a hot buzzword this year. Now we see why, guys. Smaller pieces, bigger puzzle. That's what I like to call it, guys. Smaller pieces in a bigger puzzle. Now, this next piece we're going to get into. Well, first, I'm going to check the comment section, though, because I see we got a lot of activity. We're going to see what's been going on. I see, see Reggie. I saw someone, I believe, each and every... Oh, yeah. We have extensive analysis as well as complete claims. Mm -hmm. Now, see, yes, guys, this is going to be I can't wait till you come on, Reggie, because this <laughs> this is going to be this has to have its own show, its own stream. We have to have this because, yes, this is a large part of it. Um, he says we have extensive analysis as well as complete claims charts showing that Japanese banks and JP Morgan clearly are infringing completely down to the cold level. And I'm pretty sure that's involving that JPM coin. So that's why my research on that angle, I'm being so careful with what I'm seeing. Okay. And another question that I did want to ask, and then we'll probably talk about this later, but I'm, I know it's not just banks. And then this whole DeFi 2.0 situation. OK, I'm curious about how that falls into it. So definitely I, I can't wait to that conversation. I, I'll admit I am like marking out right now. To me, this is the equivalent of The Rock jumping into this live stream, guys. So you got to bear with me. You got to bear with me. Um, Let's see here. I was definitely I see the H bar comments. Yes. H bar has just got a new partnership. I don't want to get off track a little uh, too much, but there's definitely a video coming about coming out about that new Hedera partnership. OK, so definitely going to get into that now. Let's go over. Because she was talking about the digital currencies. Let's finish this out. There's only about 60 seconds left. And then I got some more graphics for you. I want to share. So the IMF just had a panel with, on cross-border payments with Jay Powell, Carstens from the Bank of International Settlements and the head of the IMF. And Carson said this very clearly. It was really, he really let the cat out of the bag. He said, um, he, he, ex he was talking with Powell and he explained that if a central banker wanted to, they could stop a non-citizen from transacting in the system. Now, what that means is, they can stop anybody from transacting in the system. So in essence, in, a, in an all digital, no cash system run by the central banks, you've got a credit on the company store and your individual money can be turned on and off or changed in value. Now, that's uh, admittedly it's a little bit nerve wracking. OK, um, but I just when I hear that, I think. OK, there's a lot of corruption in the fiat system and we live through it. We use it. We take advantage of it. Again, very sketchy, very, very tight road here. We're walking. But I'm a journalist, <laughs> like I said last week, guys. And the truth is what's the most important here, because we get down to the truth. We're always protected. Knowledge is always the best weapon okay so with that let's go over into this bank of international settlement report from june of 2021 okay because she was just talking about how these currencies will be you know controlled by a central person or central entity or whatnot and then they'll be able to take your stuff so over the uh, course of 2021, remember that interview was conducted in 2020, right in the thick of it all. And then I stumbled upon it beginning of the year, gave it to you guys. Since then, we've been hearing more and more about central bank digital currencies. OK, this is courtesy of the Bank of International Settlements. They are basically they're showing us that cash is in decline, dramatically in decline. 
And that accelerated right at the start of the situation. Now, these statistics are very, very enlightening. Okay. And then when you take into account all of the other events that were going around at that time, you know, a lot of companies closing down that would, you know, largely in part accept cash, they weren't open. So I'm pretty sure that contributed to it. And then the attack on small businesses was was definitely part of this whole situation, guys. But let's move over to this CBDC architecture. Now, I actually got this PDF from my school, guys, University of Nicosia, right? And by the way, next week is my final exam. So wish me luck, guys. I'm studying like crazy. But in this, this is the information that they're giving us. So we are looking at the architecture for the retail CBDC, okay? This is essentially the digital fiat system. Now, as we go through this, I would be curious to know, Reggie, if you're still watching, if this any in any way, you know, if they're sourcing from your knowledge to put this together. I would definitely be interested in knowing that. But um, as you can see, they have the two tier system, but it's let's see here, this graphic that is the most enlightening. OK, so we have at the core digital central bank money, CBDCs. Right. And then it splits off into two sections. One is available to the general economy that offshoots into account based retail CBDCs access with identification. Let me give a key word. And then we have token base, which is a tokenized version of retail CBDCs that will be accessed that is allowed. Um, anyone can access uh, from an anonymous standpoint pretty much with the public or private keys. So this is how the CBDC structure is going to be set up. And ultimately, once we get to the point of it rolling out, this is what it's going to look like. So you're going to have, and then at the top, of course, only available to financial institutions. They have their own chain. Uh, bank reserves, wholesale CBDC, that goes to the banks. So looking at this setup, we're seeing it, it it ties again into the narrative of the control situation but with this it's a it's like a blatant picture of our money is going to be different from your money like that's just how it's going to be so that brings into question privacy coins where do they where do they have a place at in this scenario Monero, they don't like, but Zcash, they've anointed to this new level for whatever reason, right? Very, very, it's, I love learning about this stuff, but it's very deep. It's very deep when you get there. But you can see here, account-based retail CBDCs, access with identification. That brings us to digital identities, okay? As we close the year, guys, I was starting to tell you, like, okay, it's digital ID season. With payments, naturally has to come the identification of each party. So it makes sense. We're going into, you know, the new form of the uh, payment messaging system in the form of ISO. And now we are hearing more and more about digital identities associated with the NFT conversation and the metaverse conversation, right? It's, it's how, like she said, the media powers that be they structure content in a way that you can't you don't realize that events occur in succession or like in connection with each other there's a word that starts with a p that i'm thinking about i can't remember it but you guys get what i'm saying right their goal they're they're they have mastered the ability of subversion okay i've been watching them do it for about what is it 2021 and let's see 21 years. So, yes. Is there CB needs using asymmetric private or key pairs? Yeah, definitely got, got some work to do. But sorry, it was another comment from uh Reggie. Um, yeah, so we're looking at this and we see this structure and how it's set up. Okay. And this again ties into our our discussion 
about control and who's in control okay now on that subject guys i have this piece for you here now, i don't want this to play yet because i don't want it to give it away but this video this clip here i got from helio wave that's the name of the channel on library they have a youtube account but this is the content you find on library you can't see this on youtube that's another reason why i am also on library guys which i'll put the link down to in the description decentralized media platform this is where you find the truth okay this i stumbled upon this morning now i have brought us to minute 26 let me double check that yeah minute 26 now he's this video actually came out this morning well it was released on library this morning there's a bit of a delay from your channel uh if you're synced with youtube but video comes out this morning and i'm like okay perfect for the topic of discussion right let's just watch this okay of chinese european and american business networks is currently being discussed i mean we have talked about past economic policies that led to us to this moment but the lockdowns and subsequent bailouts that we're seeing around the world over the past two or three years left many nations on the verge of bankruptcy in order to avoid an economic catastrophe the governments of the world took out massive loans and they even resorted to drawing on 650 billion special drawing rights or sdrs which are supplementary foreign exchange reserve assets which again are managed by the international monetary fund when these eventually become due it will leave these same governments in dire straits now really quickly what he just said there that 60 was 650 billion or 65 that large number we just looked at it let me pull this back up here that was in our wall street parade okay you go throughout you read this rest of this article they mentioned that exact amount okay so again <laughs> connecting the dots guys gotta love it. which is why it may be that the introduction of a digital currency has become a sudden priority but this may actually be and i personally believe it is this has been the purpose of the lockdowns all along it's about the new digital economy and linking everyone to a digital id i'm gonna run it back one more time a digital currency has become a sudden priority but this may actually be and i personally believe it is this has been the purpose of the lockdowns all along it's about the new digital economy and linking everyone to a digital id i'm gonna let him continue I'm gonna let him continue <laughs> and i think you will find right around the world that people move in this direction because it will facilitate the, the access to government services and by the way in some of the developing countries the thing it will is cut about out fraud. biometric id i mean as, as you know my view is the whole world's getting changed by technology the big political debate we should be having we're not really having it is how do you master this technology and harness it for the public good mm -hmm. but in every single field of our work our leisure the way we interact with each other technology is going to change everything so you know biometric okay. id is just we're one part of a much much bigger picture face this situation in the future we're going to have to create a global infrastructure to deal with future pandemics because i think what has happened to us is probably part of a change that is going to be just normal life for the foreseeable future interestingly now this is crazy there are two european countries who are already preparing to begin using digital currency that's sweden and switzerland now perhaps this is not a coincidence sweden has had virtually no lockdown restrictions due to the pandemic and switzerland has taken only very light measures could the reason for that actually be that these two countries did not need to crash their economies through lockdown measures because they were already preparing to begin using digital currency and they were preparing to do that before the pandemic even began i mean one might contend that a new round of lockdowns is being prepared and that's to finish off the world's economies for good Whew. now again you know out of respect to the creator of that content that is a great piece i would highly urge you guys to go check that out in its entirety 
seriously because he his essentially his position and I am I much agree that the scenario that we saw play out over the last two years two and a half three years has been because of the we go over here this bailout this money here because it all started to kick out into 2018 going into 2019 now I believe, yeah, he's actually, let me see if I can give you that. Leading piece. to massive unemployment. He goes to talk about, okay. I mean, if you can't see how that's going to turn to begin using digital currency, and they were preparing to do that. There was, uh, to okay, a so earlier in this, earlier in this piece, he's going to go into the Event 201 situation, the Wuhan War Games and how both of those events occurred on the same day and all of these other things, right? At the end of it all, guys, what we end up having to do is ask ourselves a question, okay? And this is what's gonna bring us to, this is what's gonna wrap it all up. Then we're gonna jump into the comments, take some questions, hear some opinions. You know, I wanna know how you guys feel, especially after I lay this on you. Okay, so the common conception, well, there's two that I have seen so far in my two and a half years in the space, is that one, this is a revolutionary technology. It will and is actively changing the world. We won't be able to live without it. Everything, it'll be immersed in everything. IoT will be all around us. Artificial intelligence, the metaverse, all of these things, right? all of which we're using technology to enhance the human experience, this we know, right? Yeah, agree with that. But then there's the other side of the discussion where we have the awareness of how these systems can ultimately be used to control people without people responding. Because when you're using a open source technology, there's nobody to blame. And then it also brings up another uh, documentary I saw last year, in the, and it's called Coded Bias, okay? Essentially, that's just talking about how, you know, the people who are creating these algorithms and these uh, biometric uh, identifiers, they're essentially programming them using, you know, the previous perceptions of people. OK, that's why if you look deep enough, you'll see that a lot of these uh, face scanners, these biometric cameras and stuff like that, they're constantly identifying the wrong people just based off of the, you know, criteria that was put into their programming. So that brings us to this moral question. If we know, in a sense, that we are investing in the systems and technologies that will essentially, you know, enslave the planet, where would, like, where is our positioning at in that case, you know? And I've thought about this, been thinking about this for a long time, especially once I got deeper and deeper into this information. I'm like, okay, I don't want to come off as somebody that's like, you know, down with those, you know, they, I don't want to separate. I don't want to cause any separation. I don't want to seem like I'm an elitist or anything like that, you know, but we know that the companies in the stock market, you know, what they're responsible for doing to people and have been doing to people for the last hundreds of years or hundreds of years or whatever. Well, maybe not hundreds, but the last hundred years, definitely. Now, we are in a situation where we are literally at the beginning of that, okay? Take it back to when Amazon or AOL even was first getting off the ground. Early, early internet, okay? Early internet. And now, 20 years later, it's only now that we see what the repercussions were from this technology going mainstream, okay? We've had a number of cases where 
there was, um, you know, mental health issues being accelerated over the last decade or so because of social media, you know? So we are entering a reality, perhaps, where blockchain technology, the metaverse, the digital identities, IoT, it's going to create a world where not everybody will make it. This is just uh, like the truth, <laughs> you know? And that just comes a part of human evolution. And then that brings me back again to the question, you know, why are, why are we here? Okay. And I'm being careful with how I'm saying this because I don't want anybody to leave with like, oh, I'm about to get out of this crypto stuff because I'm not trying to enslave humanity. It's not that type of deal. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. It's because of the fact that I, it's if we don't, if we don't take the time to invest in these technologies, then I feel as though we will fall under that umbrella of the servitude. However, if we position ourselves the right way over the next few years, everything else that comes with it is just going to be a byproduct. It, it naturally has to occur. Two forces, two opposing forces coming together. We never know what's going to occur from that. But what we can take from it all is the fact that it's going to be here. Our investment will be here, okay? Because the plan is to have it here. And this thing is, like, you think about it this way. Um, We're only 13 years into this industry, publicly, <laughs> publicly, because blockchain was being worked on all the way back in 1991, okay? But publicly, we've only been in this industry. And then if you take, if you go all the way back to 20, uh, 91, 30 years maximum, okay? That's it. We are still, and then this aspect of it, like I said, is only 13 years old. It's a teenager, very young, okay? But we had fiat for what, 100, 125 years, something like that. I'm pretty sure the numbers, you know, but it's a thing where, the people that got into fiat early or that invested into Vanderbilt and Carnegie Mellon and, and Henry Ford way back then, you know, the people that invested in Henry Ford, their families are still straight. Regardless to what the, you know, what Henry Ford may have done and what his products may have been used for and, you know, Carnegie and Vanderbilt and Rockefeller yeah, we know these men as being who they are today, but in the time, they were pioneers. They were the Elon Musk of the day, the Jeff Bezos, you know, the Richard Branson. That's how they were looked at back then. There was no way in the world to know that they would, you know, eventually pass on and, you know, try to take over the planet, but it's this was a very deep discussion, guys, but I feel like if we get it out of the way, <laughs> we can move forward with a lot more clarity. Okay. Because these are, this is a question I have asked myself. Like, okay, yes, we are investing in something that is definitely a major opportunity. Okay. Definitely a major opportunity could be a life changing opp wealth opportunity for surely, because these systems are going to be in place. For a minimum, what, how much, how many years Bitcoin got left? 140 something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless they just completely destroy the network, which, no, that's not possible. Everybody's got too much money invested, okay? And then here's another one for you. We're here. What about the other 87% of the population? Okay? They don't even know. Two trillion dollar market, okay. Fourteen thousand projects, according to Coin Market Cap yesterday. 
14,000 projects, different types of companies, technologies, protocols, programs, all this other crazy stuff, right? Only we know about it. But these protocols and systems are going to be the ones that everyone else is going to start using when Bitcoin starts getting closer to $100,000. Because when we get closer to $100,000, that's when they're going to start mainstreaming Bitcoin. Okay. And I truly believe that because we are entering the utility narrative, the utility conversation for 2022, Bitcoin's price might stay quiet until they kick in the payment system, until they kick in the lightning network. That's what's going to be this year's catalyst to get us to six figures. It's the only way. For the last 12 years, Bitcoin has been a store of value, a speculative asset. You know, something that risky traders like to get involved with. Now that that's not the same story, because one, we're having scarcity catch up to that notion and people are starting to realize, OK, there's not that many left. Even though we still have 100 years, the concept of this thing potentially running out is on people's minds. So now corporations are trying to figure out, OK, what can we do with Bitcoin? You know, that essence right there is going to kick off the alt, alt season is what they like to call it. But it's really going to be the utility season. And all of the utility is in the altcoin market. You see what I'm saying? So, again, we are here, but the rest of the population isn't. So, with us being in so early... The whole narrative of the control side of that part coming in, we kind of get some kind of protection from it, okay, because we are so early. And with that, again, this ties into why I am sitting here doing what I'm doing right now. With that, we have the opportunity to tell people to educate them on this transition properly. Because the people that are orchestrating the transition, they don't care if people know that the transition is occurring. And that's how you get those sentiments of, it's the elites taking over the planet and they don't care about people. That part might be true, but the reality of the situation is that life is moving, we're, evan we're advancing as a civilization, as a society, and there are two types of people in this world, those that do and those that don't. So as we're moving through this evolutionary timeline, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know, I'm just at a point where I'm deciding to do, guys, like, and this is what I think we should do. And again, keeping information, staying educated, doing our own research, that's what's going to protect us. OK, so let's not go into it with a sense of fear. Let's go into it almost with the galvanized with in in what's the word for? with some strength, with some fuel. There's another word here, but you guys get what I'm getting at here. Let's go into it with knowing that we have the ability to influence its direction. OK. The sharing of information occurred so fast in this last decade. Previously, when the internet first started, this type of information wasn't available, so nobody could sit and talk and have chats like this one about which internet company is the most evil. You know, it was probably occurring, but it was on, you know, uh, private phone lines or however it was prior to the 90s. I was born in 92, so we had AT&T. But Simply put, guys, why the banks are getting involved, okay? We know that they need to be there. They need to be there. They serve as the gatekeepers and the intermediaries. Now, they serve as the gatekeepers and the intermediaries for a monetary system. Now, the monetary system is different. And if they don't catch up, they will be left behind, which will then leave us at the will of the tech companies. OK, so it's a whole big conversation and I knew it would make for great conversation. This is why I proposed it to you guys. So 
let's go into the comp comments guys let's go into the comments see what's going on let's see what we got here man okay robert alexander the truth is the blockchain is another form of control slash prison i mean it's in the name which is why we're here learning how to use it and profit from the system yeah that now that is true that's something i think about a lot like blockchain whoa that was just a direct that's really direct to call it that right i mean i know if you look at it on paper you know from a technical perspective there are blocks in sequence that go left to right like a chain makes sense but when you look at what it's going to be used for ah you can you can definitely get that you can definitely get that so we have another question um let's see what we got here romel so in regard to the financial analysts would DeFi be our saving grace cbdc's are controlled by the bank so DeFi would be safe yeah now see that's why we have to get we have to have that conversation with reggie because i want to be able to answer that question but with me discovering what i discovered a couple of weeks ago you know there's now a whole nother level to that because DeFi, in a sense may be our saving grace but then again it's the 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 protocols we have to know which protocols to use that could be you know the safest so yeah that's a very great question very good question though. let's see what else we have here uh any updates on the dgb metaverse digibyte metaverse not as of yet they still working though they still working guys we got a uh, sonoa's official asked about digibyte you know i'm still holding with digibyte nothing as of yet that i've heard but you know i'm always on that case um let's see this is um turn like neo wait so yep let's see a lot a lot of comments definitely the corruption will continue as it has always been ubiquitous by positioning ourselves now we can be better well off to liberate ourselves through evolving tech and consciousness yes that's couldn't have said it better myself dude because yeah it's it's one of those necessary evil things it's like what i have seen especially since 2020 everything has flipped it has flipped all right i i will tell you this guys i have been making content for social media since 2010 okay be before content creators were really a thing yeah we had youtube okay we had youtube but youtube was really small i however was on instagram facebook what was the other one? Uh, not MySpace. It was called MyYearbook.com. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that one, but it was it was a unique platform back then because they allowed you to share videos, right? So I was always making content. Had been. And then when I started doing music, I made my content around my music. But it wasn't really, <clears throat> excuse me, I can say that in the beginning, it didn't really serve me as well, right? But then uh, 2020 happened, everything flipped. We all went digital. Everybody was at home watching content. And all of a sudden, <laughs> all of the stuff that I was making was now gaining traction. It was such a scary thing. So forth and so on, guys. Then we got to YouTube and then here I am now. And we're here and we're having this discussion like, whoa, it's, it's, it's just further evidence that, yeah, we are we hit the switch they they definitely hit the reset button for sure okay <laughs> definitely hit the reset button mm, mm, mm. let's see we got an h bar question coming from joe he says uh with h bar saying they'll advertise more this year do you think a big pump is coming for h bar i think that's gonna come because of project new dawn 
And here's why I say that. You mentioned advertising. Well, what is it that they're looking to advertise? You tie into the fact that late last year, Jerome Powell, the Fed, they made it a thing where the educating of the people on digital currencies is going to be big this year. So if they're planning to ramp up advertising and they're, you know, working in that field, they're already, you know, close relationship with the Federal Reserve. Uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Really wouldn't surprise me, guys. I definitely expect an H bar pump sometime this year because, again, it's a utility. Once the utility run kicks off, we're going to see all new price floors. <laughs> we're going to see, like, I think because what we're seeing now, the prices that we're seeing now are the prices that we saw, they were considered highs just a year or so ago. You know, like 20 when when um, <clears throat> Stellar Lumens was at like eight cent and it, then it ran up to a quarter, 25, 30 cent. That was considered new highs. Then now you've noticed that we're sitting there now. We're sitting at about 23, 30 cent. Same thing for H bar. So we saw lay, uh, last year around the event of um, what was that? They went live for it. It was the birthday. Uh, Hadera's birthday had a nice little run up then and then they announced nfts staking and and that's another thing too that's really going to contribute to the pump on on top of the you know extra advertising is the staking coming to Hadera. so that's going to be something big to look out for now another thing i wanted to mention on advertising we are about to see a renaissance in advertising especially with blockchain okay I was reading reports uh, last month that now Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter have opened up their channels for crypto-related advertisements. This means that from an analytical perspective, all of those social medias are going to be the words crypto, blockchain, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Doge, Shiba Inu, that's going to be within the analytic system, which means that now, all of that form of content is going to be magnified. So there's going to be a lot more people joining us <laughs> in the coming months, guys. And it's really because of these advertising lines, okay, being these advertising channels now being open. Again, that just further shows that we are still in the beginning and there are more phases to this to go. And once once the ads kick in on social media, and then we have crypto.com Super Bowl ad next month, <laughs> as well as FTX. This this year might give us the mainstream run up. OK, and that's going to be the biggest run up that we've seen so far, because it's going to put us up to a level to where we'll have brand new, brand new price floors. I mean, I'm talking Ethereum's minimum value will be six grand. <laughs> we won't see anything lower than a six thousand dollar Ethereum, a sixty-eight thousand dollar Bitcoin, things like that. XRP, you can pick a number, <laughs> you know, with XRP. So, yeah, guys, that's that's really what I see happening very soon. Okay, very soon. All the little pieces are in place. All the little players, they're positioning themselves and they're using all of their resources and they're doing it together. That's another point I want to uh, make really quick before we get to the next comment. This is the one time in human history that I've seen where there's this much unity. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but growing up, it was uh, Democrat, Republican. Um, let's see, liberal, non-liberal, um, Xbox or PlayStation. There was just so much, you know, separation, you know, Raw or SmackDown, Coke or Pepsi, which, you know. But now, even in professional wrestling, there are forbidden doors open. There's people coming from this show going over here and all of this other stuff. But that same message is seen in media all around. I don't know if you guys have seen the last Spider-Man film. Um, I really don't want to spoil it. But uh, there were some very, very special guest appearances from different dimensions that came in and helped him. But essentially. What you see with all of that is a push towards globalization 
And with that, it's a lot of cooperation occurring. So from that aspect, it's like, uh, well, we've been asking for this for quite some time, generations, trying to bring people closer together. But I think there's a fear involved, and that's how you get the whole one world currency narratives and the one world government and, you know, new world order, all this other stuff, which I understand. I actually had a guy when I was really younger. His name was Jack, was a former Marine. And uh, him and my mom, they were friends. And I remember him telling me, he pulled out a book. He says, uh, this is what happened in World War One. a story they won't tell you about. I'm like, what? what, what? I'm eight years old, okay? You don't tell this information to an eight-year-old. This is what he told me. He says, he says yeah, um, so there is governments they work together in order to create events that then cause people to support their events and do all of this other stuff he basically broke down the whole game to me there in the backyard i'm kicking the ball around i don't know what he's saying but i never forgot the conversation i never forgot the conversation and then 22 years later look at where we are <laughs> you know, he was on to something. He was on to something. But um, let's see what else we got here. Um, they're going to be getting in at cheaper prices than most of us. Yeah, that would explain that latest dip. Body dotty. Yeah, that would explain that recent dip. I really think that's what this was. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lottie Dottie says they're going to get in, be getting in at cheaper prices than most of us. I really think that's kind of what this recent dip was about. Because if you look at the headlines, there are no explanations. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you got the typical uh, trader um, liquidation story. And then you got the FUD coming from Kazakhstan and, you know, more China stuff and all of that. But it shouldn't have brought it down that that much. Now, albeit the situation in Kazakhstan where it affected 15 percent of the hash rate. Yeah, that that might be some cause for alarm. but once that stuff kicked back on, the price should have, you know what I'm saying, recovered. Again, that takes us back to last year, guys, and what I think is going to be a repeat. Same type of dip, same type of consolidation. And I always hold on to this fact. I'll never forget this when I was told that Q1, specifically January, is when people like to buy. Because by the time we get to May, they're selling and walking away, you know? <laughs> so there's that. Now, let's see what else we got here. We got Casper Labs. I see this question. Steve Bishop asks about Casper. So when I did that review on Casper, I was highly impressed. I was very impressed. Like I said, that I really see that as when Tezos takes off, because Tezos, when that run starts, it's going to bring highly upgradable blockchains into the discussion casper has that same quality there are several others but you know for the sake of discussion casper falls in line with tezos as being easily uh upgradable blockchain which serves to you know accentuate scalability so that's a good thing i'm definitely going to be um keeping an eye on casper you know i have my 42 assets selected you know that's my bag as a matter of fact, I do have a space. I have several spaces open. <laughs> Could very well put that down there because I do, like I said, um, and this brings us, as a matter of fact, Gavin Wood, when I was going down the polka dot rabbit hole, he says that blockchains like Tezos and their ability to upgrade without much you know, outside work is going to be essential going forward. It's kind of like he used the analogy of um, Mac, uh, MacBook being able to upgrade on its own, excuse me, without you having to, you know, actually send out, uh, get the notification and, you know, type it in yourself. They self upgrade again, Casper does that same type of tech, uh, same type of thing. So they will definitely have a place. Um, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. what about the neutron now yeah i have been curious about this too and i was gonna make a video about it um but essentially 
here's where I'm sitting at. I have removed all of my Tron holdings, like Tron related holdings. Like uh, I got out of Ape NFT. I did. Okay. I got out of, well, I still have Clever, but then they have their own blockchain. But I got out of Tron. I got out of Ape NFT, not doing that just Lynn thing anymore. Um, you know, did pretty well. It was all right. But I, I'm backing away from Tron because I want to see what they do. I want to see what they do with him stepping away and going the geopolitical route. You know, he's in that realm now. There is an opportunity for him to mention Tron and suggest it, but there's no guarantee. OK, but on the other side of that, you have the opportunity of somebody, a new face, just stepping up and taking over. And if that new face happens to be connected or coming down from the top then you know now again tron is the the system is solid okay that was actually one of my first that's how i learned about DeFi and swaps and all of that other stuff was you know practicing on the tron ecosystem mainly because it's cheaper and it's faster and it's easier it's way easier to do DeFi on Tron. That's why the total value locked ran up so much during, you know, 2020 and 2021. But with Justin stepping down, I just, you know, I made a cautious decision. Okay. Prices have come way back down now. Definitely Tron is like at what, four or five cents right now. So, you know, if there's some information that motivates me to look back in that direction, definitely take advantage of this dip but as of right now i'm just a little bit i'm just being cautious with my tron bag you know i'm gonna let things play out see where it goes you know maybe uh like i said the potential for some figure to come into the tron space now that's what's gonna kick it off the next age next phase of tron if you will let's see um what do you think of Cypherium? Wow. Yeah, that was that project. Uh, thanks, Mr. Hayek. Hope I said that right. Oh, no. Uh, but yeah, Cypherium. Looking into that, they are really focused on CBDCs, um, specifically the distributed ledger systems that move the CBDCs around. So definitely looking into that. And again, Cypherium um that was a very low priced asset i think we were talking about three cents with cypherium so if they deliver on their promise definitely a powerful definitely a powerful one you want to keep maybe keep that in a moon bag you know so let's see what else got here uh dgc soldier thoughts on gala and phantom phantom i don't know that much about gala gonna go crazy I'll tell you that right now, guys. Um, they had that event last month before Christmas, you know, that festival where uh they invited everybody. Everybody. They have a Sims type game coming out this year. They also have a first person shooter that's coming out this year. So yeah, Gala's gonna do some things. That, that, that is that hey, you put that in that space <laughs> in one of those missing spaces for sure. Let me write that down. So I gotta love live television, but yeah, definitely a fan of Gala. Definitely, uh, well, gonna curious about Phantom, hearing a lot more about it, but definitely a fan of Gala games, guys. Definitely a fan. I think I got in on that Coinbase listing. I remember telling you guys about it, that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, let's see. Aaron Connolly says, Do you think XRP will win the court case? I hope so. <laughs> I mean, but then again, the more I look into it, the more I'm like, if they win, hooray, we're running up. XRP will be like $180 <laughs> before the end of 2022, just because of how much time we've waited for this to be over. If they lose, though, then it's a situation of... um it's just like it just becomes it becomes classified in a different way. Okay. 
And I don't think XRP will be removed from exchanges. It'll just be like the illustration that we have here. Okay. XRP will then go up here. Only available to financial institutions. That's the type of situation we're dealing here, dealing with here. Bank reserves, wholesale, CBDC. So I think that either way is just if we if XRP does beat the SEC, so to speak, then we win. If they don't, then they win. That's the way I'm seeing it. That's how I'm seeing that play out. Um, let's see. Any thoughts on ICP? Garrett, Garrett Duggan asks uh, about ICP. Definitely still a fan of ICP, Internet Computer. Um, they're, they, re, they made that list. <laughs> they're definitely on the list still. Now, with ICP, it's a situation of when, I, when we were doing some digging along this level of vibration with, you know, secret governments and banks and connections, um, ICP came up in that conversation way too many times. And then here's a thought that many people may have overlooked. Um, the fact that that commercial, that Definity commercial is so well put together means there's a lot of money behind it. Now I know, okay, it's just an ad. Barely people, anybody has even seen it, but not all these blockchains have that. And that's important because remember, like we were talking about earlier, the advertising is now about to start kicking in. So in the first wave of advertising, we're going to see the blockchains that already have their marketing ready to go. ICP, Crypto.com, Hedera Hashgraph, Stellar Lumens, Tezos. Okay. Tezos has, the, check out their YouTube channel. They are prepared for the marketing run. So outside of that, though, as far as the technology goes, ICP bringing smart contracts to Bitcoin there, that canister system um, uh, that fits into their blockchain operation. It really marvels me, OK, because essentially what we're looking at here is ICP kind of does with their blockchain what I like to do with my thoughts. <laughs> you put them all here on a board. Right. And then. As the thoughts come in, as soon as they hit the canvas, they go here, they go here, they go there, 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 like that, right? That's how ICP essentially processes information on their blockchain. And with that, I think that it kind of, it, it's going to give it some strength, you know, especially when it comes to the scalability side. Because when you, at that point, all you have to do is just expand your canvas, and then you can bring in more things and then send them in more places. So, and that also opens up interoperability. So, yeah, definitely holding on to ICP. Um, I wish there was more news about it being spoken out. Um, I'm just going to have to stay on their Twitter, their discords or Telegram maybe to get more information. But publicly, mainstream crypto media, they don't want you to hear about that one. That's another thing that I have been seeing too, guys. The same, um, what they what, what we call, same strategies, mechanisms from mainstream media. Oh, they're all through crypto media, all through it. Okay, uh, but yeah, ICP, great pick, definitely. Uh, they'll definitely be around over the next few years. I I believe so. Of course, uh, not financial advice though, right? I gotta say that anyway. Uh, Hassan Han. Sonny Simmons asks, what's your top AI pick? Artificial intelligence. Let's see. Fetch AI, definitely, because they're the only ones I'm seeing working with Bosch. And I, I look over here because I got my previous board here and Fetch is still there. Fetch made the list again, but that was just first thought here. Um, so we got Fetch AI. But then we have other projects that are also working with artificial intelligent applications. Um, one of those being Elron, I know is working with AI. Of course, IOTX, IOTA, um, Render is another one, but that's more around video game graphics. I, you know, I would definitely say Fetch AI because of that connection with Bosch. And then Bosch was at consumer electronics show this week 
showing off their drivable mobility. And another thing too, Hyundai is introducing this meta mobility, which is essentially self-driving programs for the metaverse. Like uh, that's right up Fetch's, Fetch AI's alley, especially when you take into account how their, uh, their AI agents work and how they can be programmed to host different networks in different places and all have them connected. So between Fetch AI, well, yeah, well, there's really no in between. I, I'm gonna say Fetch AI <laughs> will be my top AI pick, honestly. Uh, yeah. So, let me see. I think we've covered all the questions. Oh, we got another one about Cosmos. Can Cosmos replace the Solana network? Hmm. Not. I, well, hey, anything is possible. You know, this is another one of those situations where. Excuse me. Uh, a lot of people have been telling me about Cosmos. Of course, you know, with the amount of things in this space, that's one of the ones I haven't had a chance to tap into yet. But with Solana's position and their backing and where they're coming from, that's going to be a hard one to do. It's going to be hard to do, but it's definitely possible. I can definitely see it happening because, like I said, Cosmos is getting mentioned in a lot more spaces. So, Let's see, we got a new uh, Aaron Connolly. Is mana a good investment? Uh, guys, tell them yes. <laughs> yes, okay? It's, it's possibly one of the best that you can make, okay? It's, it's the only, it's the institutional perception of the metaverse, the enterprise perception of the metaverse. Like when Decentraland is Bitcoin for the metaverse, because it's the first token you hear about when you even mention the word metaverse. They say Decentraland, then they say Axie Infinity, and then um, what's the third one? See, you can't even remember the third. <laughs> I can't even remember the third one because the only ones you hear about are Decentraland and Axie Infinity. So definitely mana, good investment. Been holding on to mana for a long time. I remember when it was 12 cents. 12 ye <laughs> uh, oh yes and sandbox right thanks thanks boss thanks so i know sandbox that was the third one but yeah either one of those directions mana axi sandbox uh sandbox is really picking up steam with the institutions you know but again i feel like decentraland sandbox that's the xrp stellar conversation all over again you know, that's the Ethereum Solana conversation. You really can't lose in either direction, honestly. And then don't forget about Sensorium Galaxy. Okay. Good. Oh, one, you want to look into Senso because Sensorium kind of plays as the next gen to Decentraland and Sandbox. Okay. Much like a perfect analogy here, the the time period where in gaming we were when we were coming from PS2, Xbox, and GameCube's age, and we started to kick into PS3, so forth and so on, right? The first 360, the the, the conversation was next gen graphics, next gen gaming. That's where you get with Senso as far as a metaverse perspective goes. So let's see. All right. Uh, Sinan Yuong, okay, asks about AMP. AMP, yeah, okay, so they just got added to Grayscale. That made me turn my attentions towards them. Last year, there was a lot of discussion, um, mainly because of, you know, popular YouTuber. We won't mention any names, but he was floating around a rumor that they were supposedly working with Amazon, and it was because of that that I didn't come to my channel. I didn't come here and be like, guys, let's rush into AMP because he said that they might be working with Amazon. As we can see, that didn't necessarily play out yet. <laughs> okay, he just may have jumped the gun a bit. But if Grayscale replaced, they took out two assets, two DeFi assets, I think, I believe, uh, UMA and BAN, uh, BAN protocol, and replaced it with AMP. Now, I will say their Flexa network, after doing some reading, that's going to be a pretty, very powerful 
piece of equipment, AMP and ACH tag team, because they essentially do, they essentially work the same function. It's the ability to convert fiat into crypto. And judging by the conversation that we had in this stream, uh, that's the goal <laughs> is to uh, ultimately move all of the fiat into crypto, into a digital form. So a project like AMP, ACH, you know, more so AMP for subject of discussion is definitely going to be a, a good play, in my opinion, Yeah, um, especially with Grayscale picking them up. That's really going to make me, like I said, I got the video coming uh, next week explaining AMP. You know, we're going to do a little breakdown, deep dive, learn the blockchain, tokenomics, history, all that good stuff, right? So, yeah. Um, let's see. Got one more question here. I'm going to take one more question, guys. And then uh, I'm going to give you my closing thoughts. And then we're going to look at the market, too. Uh, but, Joe. Dapro asks, do you know why Facebook Meta put a pause on DM? Hey, they didn't. <laughs> okay. We just don't hear about it. But that's why last year, guys, I was the only one talking about DM. Facebook having a currency. Okay. You got to understand the implications of that. And then people saw it. People saw it. By the time we got to, what was that? Uh, October? October? November? Yeah, October. And he stepped out and he said, and mind you, they had this plan since the beginning of 2021, but waited till October around Halloween where everybody wanted to be dressed up as somebody else. He waited until Halloween and was like, okay, we're going to do this metaverse thing. Went public. All the metaverse projects went absolutely insane, right? But behind the scenes, no V. First, it was going to be, well, okay, they changed the name from Libra to Diem. Right. Then Diem uh, kind of just set them. Diem never really went anywhere. They just stopped talking about it because they went to develop the wallet. While everybody was fawning over Meta and the Metaverse, that Novi wallet was developed. It is finished and it is complete. And it is actually getting ready to launch in Q2, I believe. I have to find the source of this information. I... If, if you guys would like, I'll definitely do a video. It's time to talk about DM again. Now that they've gone to Meta, because here's the thing. Meta needs a currency, okay? I'm personally pushing for Digibyte to be slid into that conversation. I just think it would be perfect, but they are going to need a currency. DM was already going to serve as the social current, the internet currency for Facebook. It was going to be their currency, right? Now Facebook's Facebook is going to be meta, so they're going to need a currency for the metaverse, and Diem is it. The Novi wallet is going to be integrated into future Facebook and Instagram apps and WhatsApp. That's where the trial is actually going to start. It's going to be integrated with WhatsApp. But after they do that, they launch. It works on WhatsApp by Christmas. Of course, by Christmas, because they're going to want to get the payment from it. They're going to want to make money from it. It's going to be a commercialized thing. We're going to see DM in incorporated into Facebook and Instagram and anywhere else they can get it. Right. And that, again, lot falls in line with the payment narrative for this year. So it's not a thing where, um, you know, DM was kind of dropped. They just stopped. They dropped the conversation, <laughs> but it's still happening. We're still going to get DM and DM is going to serve. And then here's another interesting part about DM. It's and then this goes back to what Reggie said earlier. DM is that stable coin you got to be careful of. OK, it's a collection of currencies. It's going to be basically like this. DM is an algorithmic stable coin that is. Uh, backed to a basket of fiat currencies, whatever those fiat currencies are going to be backed on, that's what's going to give DM its value. Okay. So simply put, let's just say we have a DM currency here in the United States. And if the USD that's connected to DM is backed fully by reserves, then in the transaction phase, that DM is then backed by the same reserves. Okay. So 
again, that all ties into that video that I showed you earlier, Helio Wave, and uh, he talks about the SDR and that $650 billion that needed to be bailed out and the trillions that came after that. DM will serve as a stable coin to connect all stable coins. Okay. Gonna get gonna get deeper into it, guys. Let's see what else have here. Um beginner tutorials. Yes, I just saw this, wanted to catch that. The Digit Hustle University playlist. I'm kind of, you know, that's where we got all the basic information. I'm still working on expanding that, but if you're looking for some, you know, entry points, you can start there. I will be working on more videos. And then plus, hey, shoot me an email, dude. You can send me an email, ask any question you want. This is what I do for a living. <laughs> okay, so hey, I am here to please. So let's see what we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's see. Da, da, da. All right. I'm going to drop my email down in the comments for you. And then we're going to take this question here from uh, D. Liz Righteous. Okay. And then I'm going to drop my email for you. But yes, what industry will be the most impacted by blockchain in 2022? Either supply chains, health, energy, music, film, automobiles. The most impacted? Uh, you're requiring me to grab my crystal ball here. So which one do I think is going to be the most impacted? It's a great question to close out too, because it's going to help me transition into my last point. So which industry do I see being the most affected this year? The themes that we have, let me pull that back up. Because the, the driving focus right now is payments and identification. I think that honestly, we're going to be looking at retail as being the most affected because the retail sector is what's going to be the testing ground for these new payment systems. It's going to be the consumer exchange that is going to be using these new stable coins or these new digital currencies. Like, I mean, uh, remind you guys next month, the world is going to see its very first digital currency. Okay. We already have a CBDC active being used right now. It's called the digital yuan and it's going to be given to everybody at the Olympics next month, next month. Okay. Now, with all of these things coalescing together, uh, the previous theory I had last year where I was like, Super Bowl, uh, bear market, da, 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 get out of the way before the Super Bowl. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Don't listen to me. There's too many things happening in February that, that could really make that wrong. But essentially, I think it's going to be retail. And mainly because, again, the payments, the consumer economy is driven off of identity and, you know, transactions. And that's what they're looking to change this year. So that's definitely going to be one of the areas that is affected. That will also connect to, in a sense, though, supply chain and the health. Because if the supply chain technology isn't functioning enough for this influx of buyers and for these new influx of consumers, then, you know, that's going to cause some, some friction. So to answer that question efficiently, it's going to be a situation where there's going to be, it's going to be retail and there's going to be a ripple effect. Every industry connected to retail and it's a lot. <laughs> retail ties in everything. You know, I, I worked in retail, I know, but it's going to be create a ripple effect. Retail will serve as the first domino. Then when the improvements for retail come, that's going to drive the rest of the industries to improve their consumer experiences. OK, because now you got Amazon on the blockchain, you got DoorDash on the blockchain, mark my words, <laughs> um, all this type of stuff. Right. All these retail at Walmart, Home Depot, you know. 
everybody's using Bitcoin. They have ATMs there. They're using a the blockchain. Uh, Ripple's liquidity hub is connected to CoinMe, which these ATMs are getting ready to pop up all across the country. So, yeah, the payments, the retail. The retail is going to affect supply chains. It's going to affect brands. Brands are then going to change how they connect with people. That's going to start, like, again, that's going to start that chain reaction. Once retail is altered, the brands start to alter their behavior, then the culture that is connected to the brands, their behavior is also going to change. And then where when culture starts to change, then we'll start seeing music, film, and all these other things change. Now, you mentioned energy. It's one of my favorite subjects. I feel like energy is already changed <laughs> by blockchain. And what they're just going to do is just publicize it. So, but that, you know, I hope I got to the bottom of that, guys. Um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's going to shoot you my email. I'm going to drop this down in the comments. Jesse, you made it, brother. Welcome. Welcome. Your information served us well today. Served us well today. But I'm going to drop my email in the comments, guys. You know, that way. Oh, Digital Hustle News at email. That doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> but drop this email. So that way, if you guys don't already have it, you'll be able to send me more questions in the email. And also on Twitter, guys, at Digit Hustle 2022. Take, you know, send me Twitter questions. I am stealing that from what culture? Yes, Twitter questions. <laughs> but yeah, guys, let's see what we got here. Yeah, huge thanks to Jesse C. Okay. Uh, definitely helped contribute to the line of thinking to bring all of this together. And simply put, guys, um, we're at the precipice of change. Okay. And the reason why I asked the question why the banks are getting involved is because I knew that it would take us down a line of thinking that we needed to have in order to invest smartly. OK, now, and this is something I should have brought up earlier. This was my bad, but I did find this article here and I, I have things highlighted so we can just run through this like really fast. But how are banks going to get involved? OK, custody services, easy onboarding, user consumer experience, AMC, K, uh, AML, KYC regulations, identities. Okay. Security concerns, again, identities, and then payments and smart contracts, right? The payments, the smart contracts, that the smart contracts will make the payments irreversible. So if they, if you owe them something, that smart contract is going to take it from you at 2.30 in the morning while you're asleep and you won't even know, okay? Sometimes it happens now. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys have had this happen too. Subscription services hit your account before you're ready to give them your mo their money. <laughs> but essentially, guys, where we're at, where we're going into, it is, it is a double-edged sword, as like with many things that we humans create. But which side of that sword do you want to be on? Okay, and how? Are you going to use the sword? Again, I'll end with this. We are in a very special time right now, okay, where we have the opportunity to sit back and just let it happen or step right into the thick of it and influence its direction. And doing that, we can make our own lives are our families' lives absolutely wonderful? Which, at the end of the day, as a man, that's the job. You know, that's the goal. That's what we're supposed to do. You know, now it's just, you know, we just got to do it a little bit differently. But my position and what I want you guys to be in position to do is to educate. Okay. Because as long as we got the information and the knowledge, we'll be protected, okay? And we can do this the right way, and then we can pass it on to the next person with some integrity 
So that way they can traverse through this transition with knowledge and education and, you know, protection. OK, not going to be on here and be like, uh, yeah, Bitcoin's going to 150K in three weeks. Um, I will never tell you no crazy stuff like that. <laughs> All right. But what I will tell you is that Bitcoin was the catalyst for the digital economy. Now we're in the digital economy. And hey, <laughs> the sky's the limit at this point. It really is. But we're going on two hours, guys. This was fun. I'm glad. I didn't think I remember when last year I was, I was like nervous about these, but this was great. I knew it was gonna be a good conversation, guys. But um, it's time for me to consume some food. <laughs> so I'm about to break off and do that. Uh again, though. If you have got any extra questions, want to reach out to me, you know where to find me, guys. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. So whatever your preference is. I am also keep this a secret, but we're working on the Discord. It's coming. Oh boy. I got very, very, very good friend of mine working with me on that. It's looking really nice. Okay. So Discord. Oh, yes library put that library link i'm gonna start adding that to the all the videos and then it's also my link tree too but i'm gonna put the link to library down in the description so you guys can not only of course follow me on there it's it, it would be a good idea just in case you know one day we hit on a topic that youtube ain't necessarily comfortable with content will still be available so we got twitter instagram facebook linkedin library discord um a lot. Well, that's pretty much it. That's all we need. Anyway, guys, you know what I'm going to tell you. Have a great weekend. Have a prosperous weekend. But most importantly, we making that money. Only people from Detroit know what I just did. But I'll see y'all in the next one.